definitely. I feel like there's, I totally lost my train of thought, but yeah, no, exactly. Um, yeah, I feel like it's this very like fine, exhausting line that you have to walk of like, I am so tired. There are no resources here. And like, I want there to be resources, which is why you put the work into building things. But then you're like, I'm so tired. Why can't there still be things here? Why do I have to be the one to do everything? But I don't want to leave and leave nothing here. Exactly. And that was the thing that I felt too. And in my case, I was really fortunate that like, because my work was primarily student organizing, like I was able to basically build a whole fuck ton of documentation and like, plant all of these seeds and change all of these policies on campus and I was very very lucky because like since I had all of that that material kind of got stuck and left there and like it took a couple of years but like it's been five or six years since I left college at this point and or wait no I've been at ASAM for four years so four years since I left college at this point and, and like a whole lot of stuff grew out of the work that I thought would end when I was gone yeah. because it, uh, people can and will leverage whatever they can find, but it just has to, it has to have enough air to survive until then. And that's the hard part. Yeah. That's currently what I'm like kind of freaking out about. Cause you know, um, I was involved in creating an, a working group to try to get Asian American studies at Davidson called the yeah. Asian American um, and then also the Davidson Community Fund, which is like wealth redistribution. And like both of those organizations, like all of the seniors were super burnt out. We like are trying to get underclassmen involved. And for DCF, for the Davidson Community Fund, we have like a more formal structure. So I know there are like five or six people who will still be here. But with like AAI, like we don't have a formal structure. We're all so tired. And so I'm like kind of worried that like, but I'm, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to leave and I don't know what's going to happen. And like, obviously, you know, we, we've we thought about this a lot. So we have documentation for everything. But like, I think that is my biggest concern right now is that I'm so tired that I'm like, I can't, I have two months left. I can't like individually pick underclassmen to pick up my projects. Right. But I'm really, really worried that like, we'll just lose everything that we've built. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a valid concern. It's normal to be really fucking scared because like, if, they, if people pick it up and they run with it, then great. But if it dies, then like, it feels shitty. I'm not going to bullshit you. It feels real, real bad. But like, the thing to know is that even if it dies, if you have the literature and it's stored somewhere with someone who will like keep their eye out and, and like work it out at every possible opportunity, whether that's say, at UT Dallas for us, that was the previous women's center, now gender center. We mm -hmm. handed the LGBT like issues coordinator person thing that we managed to get them to hire. And he just had like our term book, basically everything that we'd ever done. And he just kept it in his office and he like plopped, propped it up. And every time a student was in there, they would notice it. And if they had questions, they would ask. And that ended up being how some of like, the people who wanted to organize the QT POC like sector of things were able to find out about it as they emailed him being like, we want to start a thing. We don't know any QT POC staff. And he was like, I am not a QT POC staff, but I'm the Q part and I will stay out of your way and can be your advisor if you need me to. Also, here's a book. <laughs> ah. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, that's really awesome that it did. And I feel like that gives me hope too, to be like, I like we, this, will still be here in some kind of archival form and like there will be students who will come it I don't know how like you know I feel like yeah you're like there will always be students who are coming who want these things too correct like it might take a little bit of time but it'll happen mm -hmm. and the other thing that's nice too about the the upside to the downside that the internet is forever is that if say yeah the let's say that the worst happens and the group goes to bump right if someone is looking for it or is looking for a similar group and comes upon your page and it's still there and it lists that it's defunct, but you have a link to, for example, like here's who you can email to get our working documentation if you want to restart this or do something similar, then that, even that, like breadcrumbing it so that someone can look for it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's basically what happened with us is that for AI, we like, 
when we started there was like nothing and then I found a random Twitter account from like three years before and I was like oh someone already tried to get Asian American studies at Davidson like three years ago and then we were able to talk to them and figure out what strategies they used that didn't work and we were able to build that community but it, was, it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't found a random Twitter account and been like what is this website what is happening here so yeah there's yeah that also gives me hope because I'm like there is definitely it'll always be there to some extent um yep. yeah I okay so another I was wondering if we could talk a bit about I think this ties into a lot of what we were saying about having to build like your own stuff but I feel like one of the biggest things that I've seen in terms of like disability justice like measures I would say for like taking care of is like thinking about like crip time and like slowing like the way that you do things so it's like it there's more room for care and especially with disabled people but like something that a friend and I were talking about last uh last semester for my capstone was that when you're like an activist there's especially a student activist there's almost this like double speed like activist time where you can't like you're always thinking especially when you're in an institution you're always thinking five steps ahead and several months ahead of like what the institution is going to say and how are you going to respond to that and like you're also doing homework and you're also being with your you're also being oppressed every day and like there's like all of these things that are happening and so it's like basically the opposite of crypt time and so like how do you then try to figure out how to like build in crypt time or build in care when you are almost forced to go at this ridiculous speed so i was just wondering what yeah yeah okay so the theory so i'm almost definitely not the person who originally came up with this so don't credit me for it but yes. Like, so there's this concept called the tire method where like, so if you picture, say like a tire on a car and the car is like moving, you've got like the part of the tire that's fully under the weight of the car that's just like completely crushed, completely fucked, just irk, and it's just really thinned out. Then you've got the part that has just been crushed and is in recovery and is like slowly like exhaling and is trying to become a tire again. Mm -hmm. And then you have about to be crushed again <laughs> and is having to be prepared just like okay about to get crushed so like the best way that i've found to describe kind of like the intersection of crypt time and activist time is that basically what you have to do for the purposes of most organizing is to have people in all three corners at all times basically so you have the people who are being crushed currently. So the people who are taking the information that they have about five steps ahead of what the administration is going to do and preparing for that, who are you know, protesting, who are writing things, who are basically doing the things that are physically exhausting and like putting your body and your brain through the thing of like, I'm going to make a thing. I'm going to make a thing happen. And then like, while those people are doing that, you have to have the people who previously were doing that, like taking a like actual dedicated break, actual dedicated prep time, and like setting a minimum for that I found is helpful. Like mm -hmm. because there's going, be work. there's always going to be an emergency happening with no yeah. exception. Something is always exploding. <laughs> set like a minimum minimum boundary like a good one that I've found for on-campus work is like two days where like just straight up complete decompression do not get contacted about anything and prior to you like disconnecting for those two days just typing out everything you know that could be remotely relevant just so it's there and if people have questions to ask they can find the info there and just turning off for two days about anything related to the work and then after either the two days or if it's a period where there's genuinely enough time where they could have a longer rest period the longer rest period it then you hit the preparation stage so i usually call this the info seeking part where like this is the part where you start thinking about the five steps ahead and start planning the organizing planning the actions that need to happen setting planning like the text that might go on a website, planning the type of material we need for the flyer, mm -hmm. like, all of the, the prep steps that lead to the action steps. So like have a dedicated period of time just for that, set deadlines around that. And like for this particular chunk of it, like stretch out the time as much as you reasonably can. 
like if say you need someone to create text for a brochure and like they could get it done in like a day probably or like a couple of hours or is it like take into account the fact that they have like oppression in the rest of their life and stretch it out to like ideally like three or four days kind mm. of a, like just kind of pushing things a little bit further out to give people time so that that also gives kind of them the time to mentally prepare for the fact that they're about to have to hit the ground running and start writing and typing and doing and all of the things. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I feel like is definitely, yeah, I feel like that is a very good method for like dealing with that, especially the kind of like tapping in, tapping out like idea. Yeah, um, it's organize it first. Like, I'm not going to bullshit you, especially when you're working on a smaller student group sometimes where there might be like sub 20 people or like yeah. sub base at first. Like, sometimes like the structure of that might not be as neat and perfect as I'm describing here, but like the general concepts apply of like setting basic boundaries between the times and having dedicated places to switch. Mm -hmm. you know, if you put too many people in, all in on one of those three sections at a time, what you're gonna get is like either a period of mass exhaustion or a period of mass inactivity. And in both cases, it makes it really difficult to initiate people doing things again. And like, it'll happen eventually, but while you're waiting on the happen, it can sometimes be challenging and you might miss something during that time period. Yeah, no, that is, literally exactly what's happening with like I think a lot of student organizations right now but especially like the Davidson Community Fund like I think we're at this stage where we're just all so tired that we have basically like we used to like organize events to raise money and like do all of these things and now we're like oh my god like it's so we can't do anything and exactly. we have to onboard new people and people are graduating and we're just dead like everyone across the board yep we've had those periods too like with it with with Rainbow Guard we had a couple of and like there's times when this just kind of gets thrown out the window when there's like a really true blue red emergency people are going to die kind of thing but yeah. like when those periods happen like yeah sometimes it's just shit goes down and people have to like kind of get through a thing and then rest 